Everybody, it's Charles from RawYouth.org. I'm here with DTM, Dan the Man, the Life Regenerator. We're here at Olak, the one of the yummiest raw food restaurants in Fountain Valley, and we're gonna get deep with Dan the Man and, and share his story. Dan, how are you doing today? Man, I feel great, bro. Awesome, Thanks good for to see me. you. This yeah, cool. yeah, totally. So, Dan, for the people who don't know who you are, you're Dan the Man, the Life Regenerator. Share, share with us in a few sentences what you do, your story, how you got to where you are right now. In a few sentences. Well, you know. Give us that little, little um, Well, I had uh, I had a little bit of a challenging upbringing, okay. and um, I got off track mm -hmm. with drugs, alcohol, poverty. Wow! And uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Seattle area. Okay. And at the time that I found the raw foods, which really helped to save my life, mm -hmm. uh, I was wandering around the streets of Seattle. Wow! You know, How confused. did you find it? Uh, I found the raw foods actually in a bookstore. I was walking through a bookstore okay. and a man said, hey, do you want to know the truth? Wow. And that's deep. I said, well, of course. And so he handed me this little $1 pamphlet and it was about raw foods and water fasting. And wow. I read that and I was instantly transformed for the rest of my life up until this very day. And you really connected with that. What did you do with the information? Like, how did you, what, what's the next step that you took? You know, I was a bodybuilder, and I had already read a lot of nutrition books, brown rice and protein and cans of tuna fish and whey powder and getting all the calories for the bodybuilding. And so I had an idea, but when I read about raw foods, eat the, you know, when it said, eat the living foods and that will make you feel alive, you know, or the dead food makes you feel dead. You know, cooked, frozen, and rotten food will cook, freeze, and rot your body. Mm -hmm. And that hit me very profoundly. It made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And I have learned over the last 13 years that for me, those things are true. Okay. And now I eat all of my food, fresh, raw fruits, vegetables, soaked nuts and seeds, uh, a vegan type diet. Okay. And it's been ex incredibly beneficial. I feel better and better all the time. Did you hit a point where you hit rock bottom? Like, why did you want to change? Like, what was that motivation? You read something inspirational, but what was that trigger? It's like, you have to change your life or... Bro, I was, it wasn't hitting rock bottom. I was just down at the bottom, oh, just wow. coasting along, just, you know, basically really maybe angry at my parents and okay. just trying to sort of kill myself with drugs. Self-sabotage, right? We all do Ma that. Yeah. With different addictions. That's right. Wow. Because we don't know how to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's and tough. And we don't have hope. And for me, you know, it's not like the way that you eat is going to totally save your life if you don't do the other things that are important like managing your emotions and watching what you're putting into your mind, what you're reading, what you're watching. You know, say playing the video games, killing, 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 killing all day long. That's going to affect your mind and you may not see your potential arise. Totally, you'll plant seeds in our subconscious mind and it just manifests into our reality, right? That's right, violence and that type of thing. And so, you know, when you watch what you put in your stomach, you can watch what you put in your mind and then you can feel what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. And there might be things in your heart like anger or shame or guilt or greed that need to be addressed mm -hmm. so that you can be a truly healthy, happy human being. And those are some of the things Raw food just helped me to start caring for myself. It gave me hope. And that was the one thing that I didn't have. And that's what I want to do now, is to give people who are overweight, give them hope. Because I did an interview last night with a guy who lost 185 pounds in a year on wow. raw foods. Wow. I have another friend who lost 200 pounds, and he was he had to pry his chest open every day to keep from having a heart attack. Oh my God. And he lost 200 pounds in a year on raw foods. And I've seen people with, you know, a very embarrassing skin disorders, especially mm -hmm. the young people, when mm -hmm. they have the acne from mm -hmm. the fried fats mm -hmm. and the potato chips and the pizza. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of peer pressure mm -hmm. to eat that way, but I try to encourage. There was a young girl last night, like she was about 12 years old, and she was a total raw foodist. And she was so smart. And I said, do your friends give you peer pressure? She said, no, I feed all my friends. And my mom gives me extra raw foods <laughs> to give, and all, all my friends are eating my carrots and my salads and my fruits. Nice. So it's unlimited potential there to start caring for yourself by what you eat. Mm -hmm. And it can awaken 
you to other areas of your life that you may not be paying attention to. Okay. You touched on a little bit of this, your motivation. What inspires Dan the man? What is your mission? What do you feel your calling is? Because I feel that raw foods probably opened you up and allowed mm -hmm. you to surrender to your calling because a lot of times we have this inner voice but we don't listen to it because we're distracted or... That's right. Right? So what's, what do you feel like your calling is, your purpose? When you said that I got goosebumps all through my body because it's the inner voice and the relationship that I have with that and I call it God mm -hmm. but I don't push that on anybody. Yeah, the universe, You could say whatever. I'm spiritual, right. any words you want to yeah. use. I call it God. And I've learned to listen to that. Mm -hmm. And it takes me places, I don't know why I'm taking a right hand turn, but it just talks to me. Or I don't know why it says I was gonna have salad, mm -hmm. but then I go to Whole Foods and boom, there's this uh, papayas. And I'm like, and that inner voice just says, no, you should have papayas. Mm -hmm. And then I have those papayas and it was just right. Mm -hmm. But if I don't listen and I have the salad, I knew, then I know after the salad, I should have ate those papayas. That's like our ego getting in the way and trying to feel like we're in control, right? Unless of just like surrendering, just take me wherever you want me to the go. The programming, instead of really just listening and being fluid and flexible and trying to, I call it um, releasing the attachments and, you know, allowing the yourself to relinquish the aversions you know like I like this but I don't like that so you can only sort of be halfway in your life mm -hmm. because you're gonna in this world we're gonna have the, the, the pleasant and the unpleasant mm -hmm. but as soon as we become more flexible the pleasant is pleasant and the unpleasant isn't as unpleasant you just stop resisting mm -hmm. and then everything begins to be this pleasant uh, adventure mm -hmm. in your life I love that. That is part of my mission, is to completely relinquish fear from myself wow. so that I can be unconditional love. The only thing in the way that's in the way of the unconditional love that's inside of us is fear. Which is an illusion. It is an illusion because even if you were to pass away, that's still just a change. It's a different... Um, you're just going into another adventure. It's a transition, yeah, to another dimension or something, right? And that's one of the main fears, is the fear of death, you know? And, and all the other fears come out of that. Fear of the end of the story of the ego, right? Totally, totally. And we hate that thought. <laughs> this is this story's gonna end? It's so no. melodramatic. Yeah, yeah, totally. But once you realize you are like an eternal spirit and you're not that story, then what can be fun is that I am an eternal being and now I'm going to write the story. Then you can play with this life. Mm -hmm. And you can, you're can you the actor and the director and the producer of the play. With your thoughts. That's right. right. And your intentions and your declarations. Mm -hmm. If you, I'm going to exercise every day. Mm -hmm. That one single habit can do a lot of things. But if you say, oh, I might exercise every once in a while, then you will exercise every once in a while. But if you say and declare it, I am going to exercise every day, then you're going to program yourself and it's going to automatically happen. I am going to drink a green juice every day. I am going to have a salad with my meal every night. You see what I mean? You declare it and affirm it. Mm -hmm. and you reprogram all that negative program. So for people who are in a dark place right now, transitioning maybe, um, going through a rough time, what's your tip for them? How do you get out of that? What's something, what gives them hope? What can you offer as an inspiration that helped you? You can't turn your back, no matter how many times you get kicked, how many times they call you names, how many times they've screwed you over, you can't shut your heart off. Just because those other people will do those kinds of things. And this world in this world, that will never stop. They will never stop lying, cheating, taking what isn't theirs, putting you down, judging you, criticizing you. But if you close your heart off, then you're just gonna go right to where they are. Mm -hmm. And you are gonna only hurt yourself. I, I know what it's like to, to feel pain. And you get hurt and hurt and hurt. And, you know, when I felt pain at a very young age that was very traumatic, I put a shield over my heart and to protect myself. And I haven't been, I, for many, many years in my life, I never let anybody in. I'm like popular, famous on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves me. 
but I wouldn't let anybody in. It was finally my girlfriend who sort of started to this process of breaking the shell off of my heart. Wow. And so for me to learn how to, I committed to unconditional love seven or eight years ago. And now it's finally starting to take place because I was loving from my head, but I wasn't loving from my heart. And so as I've matured and practiced more courage and more faith, and the ability to go into uncomfortable situations with my own feelings and stuff as they arise, I've been able to release a lot of the fear on my heart of being hurt again. Yeah. You know, like I had abandonment issues. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I said, I'm never going to love anyone again. Because I'm, you don't want to be left alone. That's you know, right. Yeah, right? So I don't want to feel that again. Mm -hmm. And now I'm saying, okay, well, even if I do feel that again sometime, it'll be worth it for me to let people in. And now I'm developing relationships with people. I'm opening my heart. I'm being vulnerable. I'm allowing intimacy. Even though I know I might get hurt, it's still okay because I wouldn't want to live a life with a heart. This thing was on because I would read, 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 and I was very intellectual. And a friend of mine just told me the other day, he said, Dan, you're a genius, but you're using that to protect yourself from loving. And he was right. And so I'm just working on really opening my heart. Mm -hmm. And hopefully what I said here might help those people that kind of get down, might have been hurt, mm -hmm. closed off their heart, they're hiding. You know, there's just going to be, you're going to win some and lose some with your relationships, but you're always going to grow. There's going to be people that are going to be supportive, and that's going to help you grow. And then there's going to be people that are not supportive, and, and they're going to help you grow because the little seed trying to come out of the ground, you know, some of them have real good soil and they just come right up real easy, a little rain, a little sun. Some of us, you know, we were buried a little deeper. The soil was a little rockier. It was a little more firmly packed. Mm -hmm. There was a few more obstacles in the way. There might not have been as much rain. Mm -hmm. Maybe there wasn't much sun. But you got to keep fighting your way up to the top, to the light. And you got to... Once that little sprout comes out, you'll have worked so hard to get to the top, to the light, that you'll have strong roots, you see? Good and you'll grow up, yeah. boom, strong, and wow. you'll be solid, see? So don't let the challenges slow you down because those challenges are what makes the root, your roots go deep. So when you get where you're going and you get like, I'm living on purpose. Most people don't get there, but you should live on purpose. Mm -hmm. Find it in your heart by quietness and clarity of the raw foods, meditation, yoga, or whatever you do to tap into yourself. But once you get that clarity of your purpose, you'll have those roots in strong and you won't be able to be knocked off your kilter. Where can we find out more about you, Dan? Life-regenerator.com, baby. Awesome, thank you so much, Dan. It's such a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was, that was great. Awesome.